As a child, I always wanted to grow up. I think I always thought that adults had more power, more control over their life. I wanted to grow up because I wanted to reduce the chaos. Little did I know what I was asking for. I think there's a very strong distinction between my life as a child and as an adult, especially in both my careers. I think I was reborn as an adult after having a career as a child. And both those chaoses were really, really different. But today I want to speak about what causes a chaos, especially in this adult life, more to do with my career. There's a lot of chaos in there. There's a lot of chaotic thoughts that come. And here I had this idea. Why don't I try to solve that chaos with some principles and some learnings from what I used to do when I was a kid? To really understand that, let's get into what causes a chaos. The first thing that comes to mind definitely is self-doubt. And as an actor, we feel, I used, I used to feel that all the time and I still feel that. When I used to go to an audition as a kid, I would never feel that much self-doubt as I do today. Things were much more fun, much more entertaining. Yes, I used to see the same children at those auditions and I used to feel a little bit of competition. But today the doubt that creeps in is not from those around me, but I think it creeps in from myself. And that's a great learning from my past self. I don't need to doubt myself all the time. I need to push myself out there, put myself out there and exuberate more confidence so that I can achieve more. One other thing that definitely causes a lot of chaos is what the idea of success is to all of us. When we're kids, we only dream big. I remember when I was a kid, someone asked me, who would you like to be when I grow up? And I had confidently said, I want to be Sachin Tendulkar. And they turned around and said, why not Shah Rukh Khan? And I said, well, Sachin Tendulkar is known all over the world. And Shah Rukh Khan is known only in India. Again, little did I know. But that's the confidence that I had at the time that, of course, it was Sachin, Shah Rukh, nothing less. Today, I realized that we don't have to push ourselves to be a Sachin and Shah Rukh. But what I'm trying to say here is that dreaming big can still be fun. And let's not suck the fun out of it. Let's not push our idea of success so strong that it becomes a point of misery or a point of anxiety. Let's push it to a limit where we can start having fun. Something that definitely resonates with what causes chaos is overthinking. Now as a producer, I see that sometimes one day before the shoot can be the most anxious, the most tension filled day. Whereas as a kid, one day before shoot was the most exciting thing. And I used to look forward to it every, every time it would come. So that's the learning that I definitely want. How can I bring back that excitement and look at those shoot days as way more fun and push away all that anxiety, push away that spiral I go down and push away those negative thoughts that tell me that things won't go well. A large part of what causes chaos in my life is conflicting people, people who don't agree with me, but more so who use unkind expressions to show their disagreement. There were times when that used to happen when I was a child as well. I have faced some bullying in school and it wasn't easy to deal with it. But it was so much easier back then to stick to who I was, to stay grounded in my roots. Whereas today, any form of, well, not bullying, but um, any form of bullying or any form of negative people that are around you, try uh, tend to rattle you, tend to shake who you are much more easier than when we were kids. Let's try and get that back. And one of the last things that I want to talk about, about what causes chaos is definitely ego. Ego is something that I had been made aware of very early in my life that I had, but it was my parents grounding that told me that it's not something that we must act upon. Today, I really thank them for those values because uh, I really feel that uh, they have taught me humility. 
they have taught me to not be overly boastful to not be so egoistic to not think of yourself too big to not take yourself so seriously that it comes in the way of judgment it clouds your thoughts and it brings off a very negative atmosphere when people are working with you another person who really taught me a lesson in humility is definitely shahrukh khan i have been fortunate to meet him on set multiple times as a kid and recently as an adult and the man exuberates so many things charm uh, uh talent but the most important thing that he exuberates is humility the man is so down to earth you can have a conversation with him even if you've met him just for the first time he was so nice to all the children on set he was so nice to everyone who would interact with him and that really really made him the star that he is and i really hope that people learn from such stars he's not the only one i recall a story when i was working as an assistant director on the movie fitur and i happened to meet the legendary rekha ma'am and she looked into my eyes and said hey are you that same boy it was really a shocking moment that she recognized me from a film that i had done almost 15 20 years before and she looked at me and said aapki aankhein nahi badli and it was such a humbling moment it was so sweet of her to show me that hey i appreciate your work even though you're just an assistant director on this movie and i'm a legendary star it didn't matter she spoke to me with such kindness such beauty such grace and such humility and a lot of these stars do that and that's really a lesson sometimes i look at people who have no reason nobody has a reason to be that egoistic to be that so full of themselves and i don't see why they have to exuberate that power they have to exuberate that uh, persona it's really uncalled for and it calls for so much negativity in others and now there are some thoughts of how we can overcome this chaos again by using those principles that and those uh, emotions that we felt as children one of the main things is communication i felt that being honest has always always helped me has always taken me ahead has always taken me far in what i wanted to do uh but one of the most important things i learned recently after getting married is how communicating with a partner really helps you take forward we've always learned that kids speak the truth all the time they are really one of the most honest people you will find on uh, on on the planet and in fact sometimes they are a little too honest and cause many embarrassing situations that's the kind of communication that would really really help that's the kind of communication we must strive to achieve it is difficult i have been in situations where it is really difficult to tell the truth when the other person is really not expecting it when the other person is looking for you to say the opposite but that's the time where it counts the most and being honest at that time might be difficult but in the long run i've always felt it works and communication is the key to to having an honest relationship that can really help deal with any sort of anxious things that lying might cause a large lesson in my life has definitely been identifying who is a friend especially as i work as an entrepreneur today i realize that there are so many people around us that are selfish that want to do what they feel is right that tend to look at what's right for them what's right for the people around them might bring up a show of friendship or might try to be your friend but might really not be one and that could be a very very dangerous situation to be in it's really difficult but i try to identify who my friends are and i try to stay away from all those negative people who who can really really bring me down who can really Uh, uh bring out again that self doubt who can bring out all those anxious thoughts who can really cause trouble who can be completely unreasonable as a writer i have learned this recently i was working on a script with my business partner and we were sitting and we just figured out how sometimes in a in a film or in a uh, characters in a hero's journey we find that we've written some characters and they might be very important but sometimes 
it's important to cut those characters out that are really not doing anything for the story, that are not advancing the plot, and that are not causing a positive change in the hero or in the character. And that's, some, that's a lesson that we should learn uh, here as well. How to cut those characters out from our life that really do not help push you forward and become a better person. Coming back to the kids, Kids do that way better and I always feel that kids identify with who's their friend and who's their foe so much easier. Going back to communication, they're very vocal about who's been mean to them, who's been nice to them and they tend to make a decision very quickly and very well, very effectively about who's their friend. Of course, this might not always be true, but I tend to see so many children sure of who their friends are and who they do not like much more than when we are as an adult and we try to see people in a grey light. That might be good for us, but many times it hurts us. One major, major factor in how to overcome the chaos is definitely getting your hands dirty. I learned that as an entrepreneur. As much as we learn as an entrepreneur to delegate, to build a team that can take over responsibilities, sometimes, sometimes it is important to just get down into the mud and get your hands dirty. Kids are of course known to get their hands dirty all the time, literally and figuratively. Many times we've seen that uh, they really are enthusiastic about doing something. Delegation is not really in their, um, in their dictionary. And these are things I've learned as an entrepreneur. As a young producer, sometimes you know what the right thing is to do. You know you have a deadline. And you cannot let that voice inside you, that ego inside you, eat you up and say, hey, this is not my job. Hey, I'm not going to do this anymore. Hey, I'm not getting paid for this. Sometimes the greater good of the project is way more important to show that humility towards the project, if nothing else, and try to build from there. That can really work for the company, that can really work for the project you're doing, and really set an overall uh, example of positivity where even the team members think, hey, this guy is not really uh, thinking about uh, whether he should do this or not and really getting down and, and being a part of the team, not just standing up on a pedestal calling himself a leader. And the last thing that has really helped me overcome chaos is one very, very important thing, music and fun. Now, when I say music, I mean literally and figuratively. As a child, I used to learn the piano and it has come into my adulthood as well, where in the lockdown, I tried this beautiful thing called the Purple Pianist and I would put up covers on Instagram and so much love came from the singing and the, and the music of those covers. And I really enjoyed that experience. Music for me has been a place where it has calmed me down in times of anxiety. It has really uh, centered uh, who I am. And I really, really enjoy not just listening, but sometimes even creating something. And I hope that someday I can make films where music is really the core part of it and it can really inspire some beautiful work. And kids, of course, know how to have fun, the music of life, where sometimes it's, it becomes such a hard world and we have to deal with so many things. We tend to forget that, hey, we're here to have some fun and we're here to take things not so seriously, but with a little bit of humor, a little bit of stopping and smelling the roses and it becomes so easy to forget that. But kids can really teach us that, hey, anything can be fun, anything mundane can be fun. They can take a mundane toy and make a beautiful imaginative story out of it. That's what we do as writers as well. And that's what we need to bring to our life. Someday we're going to look back at this time and say, hey, that was a really fun time. The golden age is always behind us. We tend not to think of it as a time that's coming ahead. Let's learn that from the kids. Let's, let's inspire that behavior that we can have fun, even if we're doing something that's slightly difficult and tend to see the fun side of it. I am of course no expert at child psychology, but these are just some thoughts that I had from when I was a kid, some anecdotes that I gave you today that could help you understand that if we look back at that time, if we look back at how we felt at the time, if we look back at how we were at that time, then there might be some learnings there that might help us deal with the problems we have today. 
from the, the transition from being a child actor to an adult actor to a writer to a producer has really not been an easy one but when i wanted to be an actor as a young adult i was sure that i wanted to leave the child actor behind me i had heard so many stories about young child actors all over the world really working hard at their image so that they can become a successful actor and i really wanted to do that things didn't necessarily go my way but today i know i have to say to see ja rahe ho to see na jao to my childhood and imbibe what i was back then to really cause an impact and really make a difference to who i am today thank you so much